Welcome to SEC Saturday Night. Simon motioned. Rattler goes to the end zone wide open. Not a great snap. Stays with it. And now looking for a block and a scramble, and he'll run for another first down. We talk about his arm. How about the legs? Lake Lock late. Rattler wanted to change it. Here comes pressure. And he fires in zone for the score. And South Carolina jumps back in front. Leary over the middle. Batted again. That time it's Tonka Hemingway. And South Carolina will take over. And they're going to win this game and have one chance to play for bowl eligibility. And remember to advance the week. But yeah, you know, like once you once you really get going, like it's kind of a uh, doesn't really feel as tedious. Like there's not really as much you have to do, like for recruiting. You really just like like sort by how you'll sort, uh, give the pitches out, go to the game, and you know, just doing that for the rest of the season, and you know, we're ranked again, so that's that's really good. We're play, playing UNLV on the road, so that should be a win. And I'm going to go ahead and hand out the pitches. <sighs> okay. And uh, oh, we're only up <laughs> six on this guy. Yeah, I mean, Kenneth also is destroying us with those pitches, and he's offering 160k. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, yeah, you know, this isn't really as easy as just a. Uh, you know, targeting them every week, even if you have the, like, advantage and interest points, because, like, yeah, the computer can be really aggressive. And, like, even though, like, it's just one of a couple guys for you, like, it's the top guys for a lot of, it's the top guy for a lot of these smaller schools, so, you know, you definitely need to keep that in mind. Um, why am I rushing? Oh, yeah, because they're terrible at stopping the run, but you still have Rattler, and I, I don't know. Yeah, you do need, like, you should like keep in mind like uh like how good they are at stopping the run like if they're if they're like in the hundred and twenties and like stopping the run that's usually like when it's a, a good uh a good time to run the ball but uh, I mean like with our offense like it's better just like rely on our passing game and obviously to run first so we're gonna focus on stopping the run and yeah let's see what happens. We're 18 and a half point favorites from UNLV, so we should win this. Going into halftime, we're up 31 to 10. Going into the fourth, we're still up 31 to 10, but nobody scored in the third quarter. Last five minutes, we score again. End of game. All right, so we win it by a lot. Uh, dominated yards, first down, sat in possession, plays rather 252 yards and five touchdowns. So, yeah, he wasn't scoring a lot of touchdowns before this game, but yeah, he really went off today. So it's definitely going to help his MVP case or his Heisman case or whatever. And yeah, you know, we're three and one, you know. That loss on the road to Ole Miss wasn't great, but, you know, it's still something we can bounce back from. You know, if we can get some some big wins against the, the stronger SEC teams down the stretch, you know, we can absolutely, you know, accomplish, you know, all of our goals. Like, we dropped the rankings because UNLV sucks. But, 
yeah, you know, this 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 upcoming game is going to be huge. After that, we're going to play on the road against Tennessee. That's not likely to be a win, but uh, yeah, we actually have the, a top five defense right now. Our offense isn't good, even though you know I'm an offensive coach. You're a good offensive coordinator, but you know that's, that's just how it goes sometimes. All right, let's see what's happening. Okay, so we did get a few commitments. Uh, I think uh, we're gonna have to start handing out bags soon. Um, yeah, because Navy's destroying us <laughs> with those ace pitches. Um, I think it's great. Like, especially since NIL is really important to him. Went off for three hundred. I'll give us an extra five hundred points. Um, I have to target this guy. Yeah, this one. Yeah, since they're about to commit, I'm gonna have to like be more careful with these guys. Uh... Okay, so my recruiting strategy has not been great <laughs> so far. Um. We're still down for a lot of guys, which is not something that should generally be happening. At this point, I'm just going to have our, my defensive coordinator recruit defensive guys. Because, yeah, we're losing on a, a ton of men. And it's a, that's not really ideal. And, uh, yeah, so downfield passing. The run first, so we stop the run. Let's see. So yeah, definitely passing the ball against them should work for us. But yeah, it's gonna be a huge game for us. It's gonna be a packed stadium. You know, if we can get a win here, it's gonna be huge, huge, huge for us. We have the advantage in defensive talent and defensive talent. We're three and a half point favorites. So, you know, even though they're number two, like we have everything we need to win today. So let, let, let's just, let's get it done. At halftime, we are up 20 to 10. You know, everything's going good for us. Going into the fourth, we're still up 20 to 10. Going in the last five minutes, we're up 27 to 16. I think she might send this. Okay, so our running back, he tries to get a run, he's stuffed. We run it again, gets eight yards. A five yard rush. LSU calls a timeout after <laughs> giving up another big run. LSU calls another timeout. We're very close to two minute. Yep, two minutes remain. But they still can't stop Jose Dyer. He's just getting everything he wants. <laughs> 10 yards. Like LSU simply cannot stop our running game. Like right now, our run. Our run pass balance is more run because we're up by 11 points. <laughs> now it's heavy run. And it's over. We get it. We win 27 to 16. Uh, like we didn't have too much of an advantage in yards, but we did dominate time of possession rather it. 298 yards. Uh, Jose Dyer had a great game. We averaged 10 yards per pass, 3.8 yards per run. Did everything we needed to do to win today. And we should see a big, big jump in the rankings. That was the number two team in the country we beat. That was that was huge for us. They're previously undefeated. That more than made up for a loss uh, to Ole Miss. And hopefully we can use this momentum to carry us to some more big wins down the line. Yep, so we jumped 12 points in the ranking. Like right now, we are a playoff team. So like if we went out, I mean, oh man, we did get another injury though. So I'm going to go back to the depth chart. Uh, do not want to be playing him, like even against... You know, Tennessee probably won't matter either way, but like even with the loss there, I mean, Tennessee did just lose again, so they're definitely beatable. But um, 
Okay, we lost that guy to Hawaii. Alright. Time to start handing out more bags. He's no one I do right now. I know it's extremely important, so I'm going to offer him 200k. He doesn't have an NIO. It's very important to him. I'll offer him 100k. NIO is important to him. So, <laughs> yeah, our options with uh, this three star aren't great. So, we're probably going to lose him. I'm actually like not going to waste uh, any more of my pitches. Because we're just down for so many, so many players. Um, with him. NIL is extremely important, so I'll offer him 200. That'll get us a bit closer. Uh, somewhat, yeah, might as well. I'm spending a lot of money on this, but. Yeah, what can you do? Alright. Oh, bro, like, oh, this is after the visit. You're not going to get this guy. He's a 55 anyway, so I'm not that uh, I'm not that upset about it. Yeah, we might have to, like, <laughs> start going to the backup soon. That's all right. So, yeah, you know, with South Carolina, <laughs> it's definitely not as, like, easy to recruit as other SEC teams. Like, that's the case in real life, too. Um, it's just tough, but, uh, yeah, we're gonna be playing again, at this point, uh, uh, we care about the checklist, actually, <laughs> yeah, Tennessee's an 11-point favorite, upset here would be huge for us, but, like, they have the talent advantage, they're at home, I just, <laughs> let's see how this goes. We're going into halftime, we are down by a lot. Going into the fourth, we're still down by a lot. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, Tennessee's, Tennessee's rolling right now. They're putting on us. So we lose by 30. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, like that, that happens sometimes. Um, it's just, this could still be a good season, you know. Just, just need to focus on what we do best. Uh, definitely not looking at tape for this game. There's not going to be a lot to look at. <laughs> oh man! All right. So we dropped by 15 points despite losing a game that we were supposed to lose. Like all the all the all the, all the pollsters care about is that we lost to a team that was ranked lower than us. And, you know, it's the bye week. Couldn't have come at a better time. Um, actually, I'm going to start looking at uh, some of our backups. Yeah, we desperately need another safety. <laughs> this potential sucks, but there's not really much we can do at this point. Um... Running back, sure we're not. <laughs> I mean, potential is important, but you know, actually getting guys is important too. So, yeah, I have to leave for him. But he also sucks. I don't know. Okay, so yeah. Um. I'm going to just keep going after these guys. Actually, I might do an NIL deal for him. That'll put me up 520. And yeah, you know, like if you if you do a three prestige school in like the Sun Belt, then you know <laughs> you're gonna have 
you're you're gonna likely win more games and like win more recruiting battles than you know like in the SEC. It is it is what it is. But um, just gonna keep pushing forward and hoping. Oh man, <laughs> it's like for a couple of these guys, like we have a visit. And they don't, so like they could easily come back. So, like at this point, I just need to like focus on like the guys we're actually gonna win. Might have to hand out more bags soon. I'm <laughs> I'm not happy about that. Okay, so we we rise a bit in the rankings during our bye week, and now we're playing Houston on the road. So it should be an interesting game. They are unranked, but um, yeah, I mean anything can happen on the road, as we've seen before. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to keep fighting for these guys. Actually, yeah, both of them might commit soon, so I might have to up the NIL. Um, somewhat. Alright, they're both getting 200 more. I'm gonna have to offer him a bit more than he's worth. So the same with this guy. I think 100k more should be enough. And yeah, you know, it's like this one. It's like it's probably more fun like than actually simulating the games like these recruiting battles because like you never really know how they'll go like that dude jo josh christensen like i've already lost out on him like as soon as coastal carolina gets their visit they're gonna like jump way ahead of us i'm not too concerned about him um but yeah you know for some some of these other guys have a chance i, I don't know about preston johnson actually because that's 165 i'm actually gonna focus on like roger and this dude, Brandon Melton. And this, uh, the only quarterback we're offering. I'm going to want to lock him in. And I actually might do some NIO to help me a bit. Yeah, one good thing about having South Carolina is you will have some money. Like, NIO is what brought some Bradler here, so. He doesn't care about NIO, so it's. I'm not going to waste money on him. I'm just going to hope we get lucky. And that visit doesn't help Coastal too much. Like, I mean, yeah, in the Sun Belt, you know, like, <laughs> like there aren't going to be a lot of ranked teams. And like, so visits won't really do much for you. Um, no, he's actually top 10 in passing yards, so I actually might want to go run heavy. You gotta think about it. Hmm. Okay. Now I will limit their draw to a passing, but I'm actually gonna focus on running the ball here. Um, yeah, we have some decent running backs. And I'd rather, for some reason in this game, he's just going so many interceptions. Yeah, we have some decent guys who can run our offensive line. Like, you know, be better, like, run blockers than pass blockers. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to play, see what happens. Houston's a slight favorite, but, you know, it might not matter all that much in the long run. So at halftime, we're actually ahead, up 13 to 7. Going into the fourth, we're up 23 to 7. So, yeah, focusing on the run has really helped us. Our defense has definitely been great. 
going the last five minutes. Uh, Houston gets another field goal, but uh, we do two, so it doesn't really help them all that much. Going into the end of the game. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, Houston made it close. Houston, yeah, they, they had an onside kick. Yeah, a four-yard touchdown run. This dude, Dylan Henry, had this 21-yard pass. And, uh, yeah, if he, they got that onside kick. That would have been really bad for us, but we managed to recover it and squeak out the win. So I'll look at the summary for this. So, yeah, we dominated in yards, first downs, time of possession. Rattler had a good game. Threw it 46 times despite us, like, focusing on rushing. But, uh... Yeah, we seven passing yards. Or no, they had seven passing yards. We we close to seven as well. We had we averaged five rush yards per attempt while they averaged less than two, and that's what made the difference at the end. So yeah, you know, just take it week by week. You try to get a good idea of your opponent and you know, your your practice focus at least should be focused on like what your opponent does bad, does poorly. And your scheme should definitely matter, but like you know, results should matter too, especially like when you're this deep in the season. That's definitely like some really good information to go off of. Okay, so we rise in the rankings again. Uh, we're seventeenth in Georgia. They're unranked, but you know, obviously they're a very talented team. You know, we definitely should not take this game for granted. So yeah, we lost at 55. I'm not really too upset about it. Um, I'm just really focused on like not losing these guys. Have I already given up on them? I think I have. Yeah, that official visit screwed me over. We may have come back. Look, if Georgia stayed ranked, that would have been easier for us. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna focus on these guys for now. Oh, actually, never mind. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> and, uh, let me see. Okay, so, yeah, the money we're handing out is helping us a good amount. Uh, I don't know if I'm going for him. Because we're even with the NIL, like, well, actually, nah. They haven't done they haven't done their visit yet. We still we still have ours coming up, so we still have a shot in this game. Um, yeah, our defensive coordinator uh, pitching this uh, three star recruit in Georgia. <laughs> Hopefully, we get them. Uh, so yeah, Georgia's really bad at stopping the pass. So we're definitely going to focus on down for passing here. Uh, they're not really good at running, so we'll focus on limiting their downfield passing. Hmm, car two drops, uh, strong flood. That's a pretty good play. Definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, I mean, we have an injured tight end, but I mean, like with the spread offense, we don't utilize our tight end that much, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm gonna play this. So yeah, we have the edge in defensive challenge. We're tied in the defensive challenge, but we're 11 and a half point favorites because Georgia has a bad record. But, you know, it's the SEC. Anything can happen. I'm definitely, definitely not going to make any assumptions about this. And we are up a lot at halftime. Going into the fourth quarter, we are still up by the same amount. Uh, our run-pass balance still leans past, so... Rather, should still get to do some stuff in the fourth quarter. Last five minutes, we're still up double digits. Actually, my sim this from here. So, okay, so Joey Smith gets a rush. Joey Smith gets another rush. Strong lean run. Georgia calls a timeout. So we punt it from here. Okay, oh wow, 
16-yard pass from Preston Hinton. Yeah, Jordan could definitely still make it a game. Two minutes left. But, yeah, Hinton's not playing it around. Yeah, the run pass balance is heavy pass, so... Yeah, our defense is going to have to do its work. Uh, another pass falls incomplete. It's second and 10 now. They miss another pass. Our defense is definitely doing its job. Now it's fourth and 10. If they miss it here, it's a turn of our downs. And that's what we... Oh, oh, come on. So, with their backs against the wall, they get a huge 16-yard pass from Hinton to stay alive. It's 125 to go. It's second and six now. An 18-yard pass from Wiggins gets them at... Fourth, first and goal. They get a two yard run, two more yards, and they get a touchdown. And they get it. That's not great. All right. So, Mulligan attempts the onside kick. It fails. We cover. And now we have the ball again with 41 seconds left. Rather takes a knee. Georgia calls a timeout, takes another knee, Georgia calls another timeout, doesn't matter, <laughs> it's over. We let the clock run out and we win it, 27 to 24, it was a lot closer than it needed to be at the end there, but we got the job done. Okay, so we won yards, first downs, plays, time of possession. Rather, 316 yards and two touchdowns, while Jose Dyer had 20, 74 yards. We averaged nearly nine yards a pass, over four yards a run. We did not beat the spread, but that only pisses off the gamblers. All right, so with that win over UGA, we definitely set up to win the division. I'm going to check the conference standings after this is done, just to see where we are. And, uh, yeah, we only go up in the rankings by one, so it was UGA. It has not been very good this year. If they were like how Georgia usually is in real life, that would have been a much better win for us, but now we're about to play the number one team in the country on the road. Uh, looking at the conference standings right now, we're tied with Tennessee in the East, but Tennessee has the head-to-head, -head, so we're really, really going to need a strong finish to have a chance at winning the division. Though we have already hit the six wins mark, beaten it actually, so at 7-2, our athletic director is very happy. And at this point, all we're playing for is Glory and Spencer Radler's last year with us. All right, so... Um, this is still pretty close, even with that NIL deal. Um, yeah, their offensive coach, their offensive coordinator, I think is really good. They have ace pitches, we do not. So I mean, yeah, if we lose them, it is what it is. Uh, doing what I can, at least. Well, actually, uh, once like, yeah, once Wazoo gets there. <laughs> visit here we're gonna be losing badly we haven't really been trying for him at all okay yeah that one's close uh that one's less close actually uh, i'm not gonna use a pitch on him and focus on like the games where we do not have a visit from our opponent yet And 
Yeah, I'll just use my last two pitches here. Hmm. Okay, so um, obviously Oklahoma is the number one team. This is going to be a very big game for us. If we get a win here, it's going to be huge for our chances in the SEC. So right now, yeah, Oklahoma just got a win over the former number one in Alabama. They beat them by two. So definitely, definitely a big game for them as well as us. We face a road test, according to this uh, game preview. According to this, Oklahoma has a slight talent advantage, but we have similar yards per game and points per game differentials. Ball control is a strength for Oklahoma as they hold the ball for an average of 35 minutes per game. Uh, if they have the ball for 35 minutes here, that will not be very good for us at all. Oh, wait. Yeah, I'm used to just simulating these, but yeah, Oklahoma definitely has a big talent advantage. They're 16 and a half point favorites. Could very much wind up like the Tennessee game if we aren't careful. So they lead 27 <laughs> 10 at the half. 34 um, 17 going into the fourth. 41 26. Yeah, you know, sometimes. <laughs> Oh, we actually, we actually made it a bit close near the end, but just, it didn't really matter all that much. Yeah, we actually we actually had more yards and first downs, and we beat them in time and possession. Like, Radler had a great game, 345 yards and two touchdowns, but Oklahoma was just a better team, so, yeah, nothing did matter. Yeah, you know, it's a tough loss for us, but, you know, we're coming back home after this, getting a much, much easier opponent, chance to get things right, going in the home stretch. You know, we only dropped four points in the rankings, so, yeah, as long as we don't lose any more games you aren't supposed to, we should be fine. All right. Hmm. Okay, so we were way down for a couple of guys. Um, this dude Navy's going for. I'm gonna have to. I might. I'll probably have to give him more money soon. But I'm just gonna just keep doing what I'm doing for now. Yeah, like once you see May commit soon, that's like when you start have to like start working with more urgency because that means like they could commit as soon as next week. If they're still establishing favorites, then you can probably like pace yourself better. Um actually wait, what am I doing? Okay, I'm actually gonna do this over again. I kind of forgot what I was doing before. Okay, yeah, I'm starting over. Yeah, if I'm already over like if I'm already up like a hundred something points for someone, then I need to focus more on getting the guys that don't have visits from the other targeters. Especially if it's someone who may commit soon, because at that point you don't know what'll happen. see okay all right this is good for now and let's see so yeah they're bad at stopping the pass so rather should have a good game limit their down to a passing um okay tight end under that's that might be that's pretty interesting play Okay, so we have the advantage in well, offensive talent. Missouri has the advantage in defensive talent, but for some reason our defense plays a lot better. Um, 
flag. She looking. Yeah, their 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 defense is horrible. Uh, we're nine and a half point favorites. Hopefully, we play like it. So going into halftime, we're only up by two. So yeah, it's definitely, definitely a ma uh, more of a defensive matchup than an offensive one. Yeah, you have a huge third quarter. We absolutely lay it on them. We're up 16 points now. So Missouri has the ball. We're going the last five minutes. We're up by 20. And yeah, we're not losing this. So end of game. We win by 20. We absolutely killed them in yards. 509 versus 223. We dominate time in possession again. Rather had a great game. 358 yards, three touchdowns. Joey Smith led the team in rushing. Anton Barfield had a 100-yard receiving game. Just a great performance all around. Great way to bounce back from that loss to Oklahoma. And now we just have one more, one more game. And we're heading to the swamp. <laughs> now, I'll be honest, like, I'm going to check the conference standings. You're going to see where we are. Hopefully, Tennessee is taking on another loss or two. To make it a bit more, uh, I guess, more of an important game for us. But yeah, we're number 15 now. Uh, our top offensive lineman has recovered from his major leg injury. And so, let's check the conference standings again. Okay, so Florida's actually at the top of the conference standings. Uh, Tennessee does seem to have taken another loss. But, uh, yeah, definitely, like, if we, if we beat Florida, like, that's, that's going to be huge for us. So, let, let, let's see what happens. So, yeah, we pick up a couple more recruits. Yeah, we're not getting him. Oh, man. Okay, yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to give this dude more money. Cause yeah, whatever we're doing isn't working. Davies absolutely hammering him with those ace pitches from their defensive coordinator, and he's offering more money. <sighs> um, yeah, if it's over a hundred, I'm not too worried. I'm gonna focus on the guys who haven't had visits yet. So it's just a couple since we're in the last week. And for the rest of these guys, I'm just gonna just do my regular pitches. Okay, so, you know, they run an aggressive man defense. They're very good at stopping the run, but they aren't good at stopping the pass. So, you know, if Radler does what he needs to do, we have a very good chance of winning this. And, yeah, number 15 versus number 17. Whoever wins has a very good shot at winning the SEC East. We have the advantage in defensive talent. They have the advantage in defensive talent. They're four and a half point favorites. Let's go. All right. So going into halftime, you're only down by two. Florida has the ball, though. So let's see what happens in the third quarter. We're still down by two. Uh, Florida has the ball again. Let's see. We managed to get a stop here. The leaning pass. Uh, so Dominique Laurie gets a one yard pass from Spencer Rattler. London Lowville gets a four yard pass from Rattler. It's third and five. Ooh, big, big throw from Rattler. 14 yard pass to David Clay. Oh, Jose. Jose, why? Oh my god. Okay, so our running back fumbled the ball. It's recovered by 
Florida linebacker Pablo Armstrong in return to our 19-yard line. That was exactly what we did not need to happen. The 13 minutes left. Like Florida is pretty much guaranteed to score here. Oh my God! 15-yard pass from Cole Vaughn to Brandon Kurtz. Oh man, <laughs> they're just they're 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 running it. And you know we're in the swamp. It's deafening. You know, it's a huge game for both of us. Like, if Florida wins, they're guaranteed to win the SEC East. If we win, we're in it. Like, oh, man. Yeah, Florida scores. They're going to be up 30 to 21. <laughs> because our running back had to fumble in a crucial moment. Let's go to the last five minutes. It's still 30 to 21 in the game. Yeah, it is what it is. Florida dominated in yards, first downs, time of possession. They were still in it until the fourth quarter. Rather, had another good game, 349 yards, three touchdowns. But we could not run it at all. Like, I mean, Florida didn't do a great job of running it, but they ran it a lot more. We were actually better at passing it, but, I mean... Yeah, I mean, our top running back had 10 carries of 44 yards. Overall, we had 2.7 yards per carry. That just that just doesn't get it done in a hostile world environment. <sighs> but, you know, still, still a solid year overall, especially for South Carolina. You know. Like, we, we were right in... Right in it. We were in the hunt until the very last game. Like, we couldn't, we couldn't get it done when it mattered most, but you know, we're still ranked. Lost the defensive lineman to a severe leg injury. He's out for the year. You know, it sucks, but you know, we're eight and four. Had a winning record in conference play. I mean, especially after I lost to Ole Miss. Like, I did not. I don't know where things would end up, but like overall, overall is a good season. We still have our bowl game coming up. Right now, I'm just going to focus on winning the recruiting battles I can. Right now, we have 12 commitments. Should pick up a couple more. Not from those guys, actually. Hmm. Maybe I can give him some more money. Okay, I'm gonna give, give him half a mil. Oh man, Rutgers is really honest though. Oh, and he's a gym. I don't, I don't know. This is gonna be tough. I actually, might give him some nil too. Just give us some breathing room. He doesn't care that much about nil, but you know, forty-five more points. We should be good. You know, so we're in the lead for a ton of guys. Should get a good good amount of commitments. You know, with the graduate transfer recruiting. We should have a decent amount of guys coming back. Uh, yeah, so you know, definitely in the early game, recruiting's not super easy. You're gonna you're gonna lose on some guys, but like if you focus on interest score, like that's that generally gives you like uh it generally gives you your best chance to win these guys. Navy's going hard. Like <laughs> that's the issue. Like every time he does that ace pitch from his defensive core there, he, he gets like three hundred and seventy. I can only get at most two hundred and ninety something with my best pitch. So yeah, unless I give him more money, like I'm not gonna get him. I don't know. I might have to give up again. <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna focus on this guy. Well, uh, I mean, I shouldn't give up totally. I mean, yeah, there's still a chance Navy does something stupid. But man, like. Like especially like when you don't really have those uh those badges, 
Like I really like that. I hurt you more than anything else. You know, you have those badges that give you like a hundred more points for like a specific type of player, or like fifty points for a cornerback, or a hundred points for a cornerback who's a big hitter. Like I certainly like having those like myself, but yeah, my opponents have them. It kind of like makes uh, like predicting the results of these recruiting battles a lot harder. Okay, so we won some guys, lost some guys. We did get one. We did get that gem, so I'm pretty happy about that. And uh, yeah, everybody else, they have an offer for me. Uh, actually, might swap my closest battles just to make it easier on me. Okay, and we're going to play the Gator Bowl against North Carolina. Uh, in the actual season, we lost to North Carolina in our opener. That was a very tough game to watch, but hey, Shane Beamer wins SEC Coach of the Year after a surprising 8-4 season and a ranked finish. Uh, Santiano Ellison is an All-American linebacker. And he's also our only all-conference player, first team all SEC. Great year from him. All right, so so Coastal got another guy. Uh, yeah, maybe he's way ahead for him. And it's still not make him it soon, so I, I just I don't know. Okay, I'll sort by closest battles. I mean, yeah, I probably can make up ground with money, but it's just, it's going to be so much money. Okay, so... I actually might focus on running, because they're terrible at stopping the run. And they play a nickel defense with aggressive zone. So I will limit their passing. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this is a passing play going against their nickel defense. It averages 4.44. Yeah. Um, I think that's everything. So I'm going to play this game. We're going to Jacksonville. It's the Gator Bowl. We're two and a half point favorites. We have the advantage in the offensive talent and defensive talent. So, yeah, let's, let's see what happens. Going into halftime, we are ahead by four. Going into the fourth quarter, we're up by 10. Going into the final five minutes, we're only up by five. So this is definitely a closer game, but we have the ball. It's first and 10 at the UNC 45. The offensive coordinator he calls a rush from Joey Smith. Oh! Rattler, 30-yard pass. The chance rush. We're now at their 11. Big, big play in his final game as a Gamecock. Let's go. Okay, so his next throw falls incomplete. He gets a one-yard pass. It's now 39. And UNC gets a stop. But Putman makes the 27-yard field goal to put us up by eight. So USC, so UNC will have to score on this next possession in order to tie it, and they'll have to get a two-point conversion. So they call a timeout after an 11-yard pass from Shane Peters. They call another timeout after a two-yard rush. There's 221 left. Uh, Harrison Katz gets a one yard one yard rush and UNC uses their last timeout. Ten yard pass from Peters. Three yard pass. And a huge, huge sack from defensive lineman Andres Brand. So it's now third and nine at the fifty. But Peters gets another eleven yard pass. 
Um, oh, interception. Let's go. This pass is deflected by Leonardo Witherspoon. Oh, nope, that's incompletion. I thought it was an interception. I can't read. But, uh, oh my god. 21-yard pass. Still 56 seconds left. There's still plenty of time. The defense really, really needs to hold for it. Really wish he got, actually got an interception. It would make this a lot less stressful. Oh, but we do get another sack by Brand. Brand is going off right now. So it's second and 16 out of 24. And then he gets a five yard pass. Donovan Arthur runs out of bounds to stop the clock. But there's only 13 seconds left now. And again, they need to get a touchdown and a two yard conversion to beat us. Another pass deflected by Hector Flindley, resulting in incompletion. It's 4th and 11 now. Eight seconds left. It all comes down to this. And it's over. Turnover on downs. We won it. USC wins 31-23. to So UNC actually had the advantage in yards and first downs and time of possession, but like we had the advantage where it mattered most. Like Shane Peters, yeah, he did have a great game, but he did get two interceptions. Spencer Rattler, he only had 281 yards, but he did go run heavy. Jose Dyer, 14 carries for 56 yards. Overall, it's a good win, it's a good season. And that is where I will stop this video.